Okay, here we go today. We've got a 46-year-old female that um, came in with pain associated with tooth number 17 and 32. That's uh, 3, 8, and 4, 8 for all you girls and boys uh, outside of the U.S. Um, this was a case that uh, I look forward. Um, you know, it's a straightforward type extraction. The conical shaped roots are going to lend themselves, but if you'll notice, there's not a whole lot of tooth structure, uh, super gingival. So we're gonna we're gonna start off. We've got her anesthetized now, and um, uh, there goes in one of the most important things that you should be using when you are extracting a lower uh, tooth or doing anything where you're manipulating the the mandible. I'm um, using a Woodson WDS-1. Uh, I'm just trying to release the tissue. I'm also checking for profound anesthesia and she seems to be doing okay. Um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking in my mind, you know, a 301 elevator, I'm going to get this thing out. But if you'll notice on tooth number 18, it's 37. Um, there's carious lesion, class 5 lesion uh, out on the buckle. And a uh, patient isn't interested in getting that fixed right now. She just wants to get out of pain. So you see that I'm uh, moving this uh, a whisper. Not a whole lot. You know, I don't want to put any kind of pressure up against number 18 um, for fear that I might cause some trouble. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm into this now a minute. And um, I'm not getting a whole lot of movement. Um, so I'm... You know, I'm asking myself, okay, well, I'll put a little more pressure on it. I'm putting a, a fair amount of pressure on that. Uh, I am getting some movement, but it's not, you know, it's going nowhere fast. So let's see if we can move to a different place out on the straight out on the buckle. Um, I'm using the 301's big brother now, a 34 elevator, and I'm just not getting a, a whole lot of movement. So, uh, you know, when, when you're going nowhere fast, you, you do something else. Now this is a technique that I use and we've had some discussions about this recently about uh, trothing the buckle. Now what I want you to watch and hopefully I've, I've really worked really hard to try to uh, get this where you can see it. Um, uh, straight hand piece, a HP 559 Burr, it's the same uh, width as the 301 elevator. Um, so you can't see a whole lot right now, so I realize that, and so I'm going to reposition the patient here in just a second um, so you can see where I'm trothing. Now, you know, there's the question is, if atraumatic. There's nothing atraumatic about any extraction that we do, guys. Um, the thing of it is, is you just don't want to go tearing up a bunch of tissue, particularly the hard tissue that has to, has to um, uh, repair itself. The longer you do that, uh, or the longer it has to repair, the you know the longer the patient has uh, issues. So what I want you to see is I'm going, I'm trothing down, and I'm cutting most of the tooth away out on the buckle. And um, you know I always say develop a periodontal ligament space for yourself. Um, you know I, I got down pretty deep on this. I'm about uh, I don't know about a centimeter into the into the um, uh, buckle, and um, and so now I'm going to take that 301 elevator again. And notice I'm not getting into a big gigantic hurry. I'm not just trying to rip this thing out of this gal's head. But now look at how much more movement I have just by taking and trothing um, that buckle. Um, you know, I, I think that this is f a fairly atraumatic uh, technique. Um, you know, I could have reached in and tried to grab it with something and broke the thing off and then went, went digging around for the roots or um, do what I'm doing here. Once again, this is uh, the 301's big brother, the 34 elevator. Um, now the tooth is out, boom. Now let's look at something. What I want to do is I, I took and I, I visualized that root, and I want you to see that that HP 559, um, you know, cut that tooth pretty pretty substantially. So if I'm cutting the tooth, what am I not cutting? I'm not cutting that bone. And so that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about trothing. Um, you know, go in and, 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 and take the, the tooth and the bone away, uh, error on taking more tooth and bone. And, um, you know, look at the extraction site. If, if there's nothing that you ought to pride yourself on, it's you ought to have a, an extraction site that doesn't look somebody went in there and, and used a chainsaw to get the doggone tooth out with. 
you know when when you make incisions you know it's a one-shot deal with a 15 blade you go to bone um you know so i mean that's not bleeding a whole lot i think we've been fairly atraumatic once again we're going to put a gauze pad in we irrigated with normal saline uh it's isotonic I put in a, a gauze pad, I went to the other side. Start with a Woodson, WDS-1. It's a plastic instrument, you find it in the composite instruments section. Um, you know, it's got a nice little 45, I really love using that 45 on the distal of um, maxillary thirds, you can get it right up there. So, you know, I've gone around, I've released a little bit of the tissue, made sure she was profoundly uh, anesthetized, and now I'm starting to move with the 301 elevator. You can see I'm getting a little bit of movement, but, you know, eh. Okay, do I want to go in and really start getting aggressive? I am getting fairly aggressive with this 301 elevator. Um, you know, so, okay, going nowhere fast, once again. I could try the 34, but it's probably not going to help me. Um, you know, see the angle I'm trying to get, I'm trying to cut into that tooth right down the periodontal ligament space, cutting more tooth and bone. So, you know, notice the dental assistant, she's irrigating with normal saline uh, to keep everything cool. You don't want to smoke up a bunch of bone. Um, you know, the, this whole process right now, we're into it about six minutes of extraction time. Um, so there, once again, that was about how deep that, that rascal was, um, a little over, uh, probably a centimeter or so. Um, and so now I'm going in, and, and let's see, you know, you can see I'm, I'm really putting some pressure on. Now I've got a place that I can get a purchase on, and that 301 elevator is uh, working that tooth out. It's almost out now. And um, get the big brother, the 34 sticker in there. I mean, in my pack, by the way, I have a Woodson WDS-1, a 301, a 34, and a curette. This is a, uh, a non-surgical extraction kit, so to speak. And once again, you can see that I've cut into the tooth, so I'm happy that I just didn't cut away buckle bone. Uh, you don't want to cut away buckle bone if you can avoid it. Cut the tooth away. So um, my 301 kit is like I said, it's a 301, a 34, a Woodson, and a, um, some type of a curette. I curette everything. Um, you know, I'm going in, I want to make sure that there's no loose bone. I want to make sure that there's no soft tissue that's hanging around there that's going to uh, slow down the healing process. Okay? And so basically, we're into this for about eight minutes or so. And, uh, you know, I think that that's not too bad. And I'm not suggesting that speed is, is your motive, but get in and get out, all right? I mean, the patients don't want to be there. Um, you know, no matter how good you are, no matter how good looking I am, they don't want to be there, all right? Irrigate with normal saline, put the stuff in, pack both sides, have them closed down, no spitting. See you later.